Sim racing at its basic level, it's being able to drive a virtual car on a virtual track and competing against other people online. Usually people are starting out in sim racing by playing a video game, usually on PlayStation or Xbox. And from there, they move on to PC onto something like iRacing or Assetto Corsa. But basically, starting out on console with a controller, playing a simple video game is usually the best way to start. If you want to step outside of the world of controller racing, the next best thing to do is pick up uh, some sort of a gear-driven wheel or a belt-driven wheel and pedals. This is going to start giving you the feeling and, and the muscle memory that you're going to need to be able to drive a car. And this is going to now start giving you levels of feedback, which are going to help you understand what the car is doing a little bit better. In my opinion, iRacing and Assetto Corsa are the best way to go when you're on a PC. Something like Gran Turismo Sport was always fun playing on a console. Uh, Forza is also pretty cool. It's got some cool content, but if you're looking at the very, very best, in my opinion, it's iRacing. So when it comes to the brake pedal specifically, having good braking control is going to be a massive difference. It could be uh, it could be worth seconds on track. Being able to have consistency and confidence in the brake is really going to make you a much more confident driver, thus making you a faster driver. So two things I like to do is when I'm looking at the software, uh, I usually go between 90 and 100% so that I can extract all of the information and all of the data. And then inside the sim, so whether it's iRacing or Assetto Corsa, I'll tune it usually down, um, depending on how heavy or uh, light I want to feel the wheel. But with that being said, Daniel Morad and Adam Hart, they have two really good videos. Oh, they have a few really good videos, I should say. Uh, talking about all of the uh, force feedback settings and filters. So it's a really good way to understand what all that stuff is capable of doing. And what I've learned is that there's no specific settings. The best thing to do is learn how to tune it yourself so that you can extract the most out of it. Having a load cell brake pedal, instead of using a pedal where moving the pedal is going to give you zero to 100% brake pressure, a load cell is going to change that to, uh, to be able to be read by weight. So the amount of pressure that you're putting on the pedal, the more pressure you put on, the higher the brake pressure, much more like a real car. It's going to act a lot more realistic. There's no replacement for seat time. There's also a lot of resources between YouTube, such as uh, Driver61, Virtual Racing School. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there that help drivers understand what's going on on track, understand what the car is doing, and help them analyze their performance. Absolutely. One of my favorites is Driver61. Um, there's also a lot of content on YouTube. There's a lot of drivers that are a heck of a lot faster. So being able to see what they're doing has become a very good resource, at least to me. I think it comes down to the physics. Um, I think that arcade racing games are much more forgiving. They're, they're very easy to drive and very easy to have a good experience. Something like on a simulator or iRacing or a Soto Corsa, um, the physics are a lot harder. They're, um, I would even say harder to drive the simulator than it is to drive the actual car, but it pushes you and it's a lot more rewarding when you get it right. I think every situation has a different benefit, I would say. So the single screen, a small single screen, is going to save you a lot of room. So if you're limited on space, that's the way to go. Triple screens for usually the start of the race when people are diving into turn one and there's a lot of stuff going on on the sides, being able to see around you a little bit more, it's helpful. The 49 inch ultra wide, you do get a lot more peripheral and it's nice because it's one single screen. You don't have to deal with having to um, set the, the, the triple screens or line them up. So that's pretty convenient. And then the other option is VR, which you can't really replace that level of immersion. There's still yet to some, some to be desired with uh, when it comes to the performance of the VR. But if, if you can manage it, it's probably the best driving experience uh, to be in VR.